In this lecture, we're going to look at ethers. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to recall methods of preparing ethers from haloalkanes. You should be able to name simple ethers, explain the solubility and boiling points of ethers in terms of intermolecular bonding, and explain the uses of ethers in terms of their properties. Right, so far in section 2.4, we've done the introduction, alkenes, haloalkenes and alcohols. In 2.4e, we're going to look at ethers. So first of all, how do we make ethers? Well, as we've come across already, ethers are made by the nucleophilic substitution of haloalkenes using an alkoxide ion. So let's remind ourselves what the alkoxide ion. You make that by reacting an alcohol, ROH, so R could be any alkyl group, a methyl, ethyl, propyl, whatever, plus a reactive metal like potassium. You lose the H of the hydroxyl group producing the potassium alkoxide ion. plus a half H2 gas. So the RO- is the alkoxide ion and that can act as a nucleophile in the nucleophilic substitution of a haloalkane. So a haloalkane is this, we'll call it R- dash. so this is just again could be a methyl ethyl propyl group, may or may not be the same as that R group. And um, we react that with our alkoxide, the OR minus swaps with the BR, and you get and that is our ether. So two alkyl groups joined together with an oxygen. So for example, it could be something like that. <coughs> so that's how we make ether. Next question is, what do we call this thing? So let's look at naming ethers. And you're only going to be asked to name simple ethers with no branches on them. So, as you saw on the previous slide, we've got two alkyl groups joined together with an oxygen. And they tend to have names like, well, this is alkoxy, alkane. So it could be things like methoxymethane, methoxyethane, methoxypropane, butoxypentane. Or whatever. So on one side you've got the name of one of the alkyl groups and the other side you've got the name of the other alkyl group. But what order is it in? You don't work from left to right because you could pick that molecule up and turn it round. So the shortest of the two alkyl groups goes first and it's got the oxy ending and the longest of the two alkyl groups has just its normal alkane name, but irrespective of whether or not it's on the right hand side or the left hand side as it's drawn in the diagram. So let's try a few. So remember, they'll all be something like alkoxy alkane, with the alkyl group in the, on the first part of the name has got to be smaller than the alkyl group in the second part of the name. Okay. So, how we think about what that is, then I'll put the answer up. Okay, so that was methoxypropane. We've got a methyl group and a propyl group. So the methyl group's smaller, so it goes first. Methoxypropane. Try that one. Okay, so... Here we've got an ethyl group 
and here we've got a hexyl group. The ethyl group is smaller, so it goes first. So we've got ethoxyhexane. Try this one. Well, both these groups are methyls, so we've got methoxymethane. And finally, again two groups, a methyl group and an ethyl group. The methyl group's smaller, so it goes first, so it's methoxyethane. Okay, so just don't fall into the trap of naming it from left to right, that's not the way it works. The smallest, then the biggest. Okay, so we know how to make ethers. We know how to name ethers. Let's look at the properties and the effort thereafter the uses of ethers. So, boiling points. Right. One thing that comes up quite a lot in exams is they always make the point that ethers and alcohols are very often isomeric. So both these compounds are C4H10O. So, in terms of London dispersion forces, you expect them to have the same boiling point with the exact same mass. But the boiling point of the ether is an awful lot less than the boiling point of the alcohol. And that is of course because the alcohol has got hydrogen bonding. Although we've got an oxygen in the ether, we do not have an OH group. So we don't have hydrogen bonding in an ether. Yeah. So ethers do not possess hydrogen bonding and so have a lower boiling point than their isomeric alcohols. What about solubility? Right, small ether molecules are soluble in water because they can form hydrogen bonds in water. Now at first look that statement seems quite confusing as in the previous slide we've just said that ethers don't have hydrogen bonding. Right. Ethers do not have hydrogen bonding between ether molecules, but you can get hydrogen bonding between the ether and a water molecule. Let me explain. So here's our water molecule and OH bonds are very polar. The oxygen yeah, being negative and the hydrogen being slightly positive. Now, obviously you've got the lone pairs on this oxygen and this is quite uh, electronegative. So this bonding here, this attraction between the positive end of the water molecule and the electronegative oxygen atom in the ether chain is known as hydrogen bonding. It's not like the classic form of hydrogen bonding that you've considered so far, which has always been between molecules of the same type, but the attraction between the positive hydrogen on the water molecule and the very electronegative oxygen in the ether is hydrogen bonding. Okay. And it's strong enough that attraction so that small ether molecules are soluble in water. However, as the size of the alkyl groups get bigger, it get less and less soluble in water. Now, that's physical properties. We've talked about the solubility and the boiling points. Really, we're not going to say anything more about chemical properties of ethers. They're pretty unreactive compounds. So we're just going to go straight on and look at their uses. So, the main use, main industrial use of ethers is as a solvent. And the uh, versatility as a solvent, really, you want to be able to explain in terms of their properties. So, ethers are pretty relatively non-polar, and so they're going to dissolve many organic compounds which are non-polar as well. So basically, things that 
are not, not going to be soluble in water, uh, are going to be soluble in ether. And as I said, because they don't undergo many chemical reactions, they're unlikely to react to the solute you're dissolving in them. So that's a huge advantage. You know, you could get other organic compounds where you could dissolve something in, but they react together. Because the ethers are really unreactive, uh, we can uh, dissolve something in them and they're not going to react. And three, because of the weak intermolecular forces between ethers, they're very volatile. So it's easy to remove the ether, leaving behind the solute when you're finished with it. So the main use of ethers are as solvents, but make sure you can justify why they're good solvents. So dissolve lots of non-polar organic materials, they won't react with them, and they can be easily removed because they're so volatile at the end. So that's all there is to know about ethers. By now you should be able to recall methods for preparing ethers from haloalkanes. You should be able to name simple ethers, explain the solubility and boiling points of ethers in terms of intermolecular bonding, and explain the uses of ethers in terms of their properties.